Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to show you this Green Queen alcohol ink flower, very wild flower actually, um, which tends to be the way that my flowers end up. And this one is done on the matte side of photo quality uh, copy paper, so the type of paper you might use to print photographs at home uh, or on your office copier. I'm using the back side or matte side because it's more highly coated. And I'll show you the tools that I'm using here, uh, not beginning with the scotch tape, but it's lying on the top and I'll show you that in a moment, what it's used for. But here's a nine and a half by 11 piece of that photo quality paper. There was a shiny side and there's the matte side and it's that matte side that we're going to use uh, for this particular technique. This is the Kirkland brand from Costco uh, of that particular paper and I've cut it into quarters and placed one quarter down on this Lazy Susan which is covered in stretch and seal making it nice and easy to clean off. So I take some tape, I roll it backwards so the sticky side is out, I put a couple pieces on the shiny side and I stick it down to the Lazy Susan and we're ready to go. So beginning with 91% isopropyl alcohol or what some people call rubbing alcohol, I place some in this little quilling bottle. It's actually for quilling glue. Um, tiny little dropper on the end, which is great. You can use an eyedropper if you wish. Um, it's entirely up to you. And the inks today are the Pinata Black, uh, which is the Mantilla Black, and also the Rainforest Green. So. My airbrush um, is connected to a condenser unit. It's just blowing air out. There is no ink in the chamber at all. And I always have paper towel around uh, because it can be kind of messy. Um, some people like to use gloves. I'm not one of them. Um, but that's an option, most certainly, especially with alcohol ink, which stains pretty badly. And in this case, I'm dropping down the, um, first of all, starting with that rainforest green and I've actually put the dropper right down to the paper and I'm using my airbrush you'll see me do this a lot through the video um, but initially at least to dry that green into place so what I want to do is set the ink it dries this alcohol drip ink, ink dries quickly so uh, pooling it up means it takes a little bit longer to dry it doesn't just air dry quickly so that's why I and air by air dry I mean just leaving it alone that's why I aim my airbrush at it it just uh, dries it up more quickly so out comes the mantilla black and I'm it's hard to tell the difference between the black and the green here, but I, I kind of laid the black a little bit with, again, the nozzle right down on the paper. So it effectively soaks, it doesn't soak it up, but it, it sort of stops the ink from flowing. And I'm blowing my airbrush at the ink just to okay, kind of move it around and, and hope that it becomes um, very quickly just a um, spot of dry ink. Uh, and I decided that there was really not enough green in there. And this, by the way, this dark spot where I'm dropping these inks and drying them is going to be the center of the flower. And I'll talk to you about it a little bit more toward the, the uh, middle of the technique, but I will say that where these very darkly pigmented inks have been dropped down on the paper, it will be stained underneath. And that's also very, it's not only a convenient starting place because flowers have a center and that's where their petals are generated from, but also uh, you, you will see at the end you'll want some darkness to create the center. So the technique really, uh, once that ink is dried in the middle, is to drop a tiny little drop initially and just get an idea of your airbrush, how it blows that ink. I did let it sit there, by the way, that little droplet for a couple of seconds because you really want it to activate that dry ink underneath it. And I've got my <clears throat> pardon me, compressor unit uh, for the airbrush set at 20 PSI, which is pounds per square inch. So equivalent to a breath of air. And you could certainly do this technique with a straw. I've done it. Um, and different size straws make different uh, size petals and shapes. And blowing on it harder or softer makes differences. And uh, yeah, sometimes the larger straws are, straws are preferred by people just to get a, a very large petal. You'll see what I'm doing here with the uh, airbrush, and that's a nice one because you can see the darkness coming up in the center. So it, it creates what looks like the um, center vein of the leaf or the shadows. I sort of blew the ink back there, and it's getting kind of bulbous looking, um, these petals. So 
it, not to worry. Uh, this is just the very beginning, and uh, I know that I'll go back over it, um, each one of those, and we'll make them look just beautiful. So there's no need to get upset that, that something doesn't look the way you like it, and don't get too attached to anything <laughs> either, because what will happen inevitably is that you will uh, really like the way a petal looks, and you'll do another petal, and it will intersect with it and, and change the look, and that's fine. Um, that's that's the beautiful thing about doing this particular uh, technique that I like. It's frustrating for some, I get it, but what I enjoy about it is it's a constantly evolving piece. So I decide when the evolution ends or changes. And by that I mean, um, as I'm working on this, I'm constantly looking at, is this where sh I should stop? And if it's not where I should stop, where should I continue? And what will I hope to achieve? Because uh, you may or may not achieve what you're looking for. And of course, as time goes on and you do this more often, you will come more close every time to what it is you hope to achieve. Although I will also say that some inks will surprise you. Uh, they don't all act the same. And I'm not even talking about brands of inks. I'm talking about different colors within the same brand. So that's why... Um, I start out very slowly and kind of with some trepidation. I just put a little tiny drop down. I watch how it uh, pulls up the ink underneath it. You can see the colors kind of coming together. And I'm, I apologize, you can't see it from where you're sitting, um, your vantage point. But as you're sitting above the piece, you will notice it. And these are all things that you just need to make note of. Um, I, I will confess, I don't remember how the green... Uh, you know, pinata ink acts compared to other inks that I use uh, from time to time. I just relearn it every time I, I use them. And that's kind of fun. Again, for me, it's not fun for everyone. If it's not fun for you, take notes um, and, and talk to yourself about how they behaved. And by behaved, I mean, do they move easily? Are they really dark? You'll find most of the, the Jakarta uh, or jacquard rather, jacquard, pinata rather, inks uh, are very heavily pigmented. So that's almost a given. And as I go around, uh, you'll see that I'm really just repeating um, with the aid of this Lazy Susan. And again, Lazy Susan's not imperative either. It just makes it easier to move the piece around and get different vantage points and then work uh, on these pieces from from one side or another so I'm still working on um, that center piece and drawing out more of the green and more of the black ink and I don't know if I would say that I'm trying to fill in the blanks because I'm one of those people that really likes some negative space and I like things to look very irregular and um, organic, I guess you would say. Not everybody likes that. Again, if it's not your cuppa, not a problem. Um, you can make it perfectly symmetrical. Uh, it's going to take some practice, but you will do that, that and you'll get it. Same with the center part of the flower, which you will see as we come toward the uh, end of doing the petals. You'll notice in many of my flowers, the, the center is quite irregular. It's not perfectly circled at all. I could make it that way, and you can too. Um, but again, that's entirely up to you, largely depends on how much of that center ink that has been used. You will want to leave some of that center uh, dark, and if you've used up the ink in the middle uh, in the process of making the petals, that's fine. You'll see here what I do is add a bit more green ink at one point because I realized that there's a whole lot of black left, which as I said a minute ago, I. I I want to leave some behind because that creates the shadow of the, the center piece of the flower. But I decide that there's not enough green for my liking. And when I want to pull some more green over toward where there's quite a bit of black already. And you can do the same thing at the very end. If you've used up all the ink for the petals, you go back in, you simply drop in some more of the uh, black or whatever color it is you're using as your darker color. Uh, into the center and dry it up with your straw or with your breath or with uh, an airbrush if you have one and then you'll start the dotting technique which we're going to start looking at in a couple of minutes. The other thing I want to point out with um, the beauty of using the matte 
This would apply to UPO as well, by the way, and other synthetics. Um, but with the matte side of the photo quality paper that I'm using, if, for example, at the end of um, doing this piece, um, it's, well, I shouldn't say if, <clears throat> ordinarily when I get to the end of a piece, I am going to be trimming it. Here's where I bring in that little bit of extra green, by the way. And I drop it right back into that center area and I'll use the airbrush and just dry it off a bit and then I'll go back. So what I was saying was after I'm done the entire piece I'm going to crop off some of the edges. So you're going to see all along here and you may have noticed already sometimes I draw, blow a petal off to the edge uh, like on the short side. Uh, that's a good example and there's more liquid than there is paper and so a little bit of liquid sort of skims along the edge of the paper. That's fine. It's probably going to be cropped off and also because of this matte side being coated you can take a q-tip or a piece of um, paper towel or a cloth or anything with a little bit of the isopropyl alcohol, that rubbing alcohol on it, and you can rub off um, very easily. Any piece or um, little dot that's gone astray, you won't be able to clean off that center piece as I pointed out right at the very beginning because where the drops of ink have dropped and you've dried them into the big pool, it's going to have dyed the paper a bit. But any of those outlying areas, I've gone in and cleaned up little dribbles uh, or little bits that you know I, I, I couldn't crop off. Um, but I just thought that they looked a little bit messy. I just went in and, as I said, with a little swab, I often use Q-tips or something like that, and just clean it up a little bit. So the entire time, I'm moving it around and trying to decide when to stop. And by stop, I mean stop doing the petals. Um, obviously, that wasn't the time, but it will be in a couple of seconds here, a couple minutes. I just want to use up a bit more of the green and really make some larger, more pronounced uh, petals. So what I did there was dropped in a little bit more of the alcohol, maybe three or four drops instead of just one. And again, let it sit for a moment, pick up the ink underneath, and then work it out with the airbrush. But the beauty of this ink too is that you can still see all of the small ones, long ones, stringy ones underneath, but they all just blend in. Um, and for this particular technique, it, uh, it is what I want out of these, these flowers. I want them to look out of this world, very 3D. I want them to almost jump out at you and look as though there's a lot of movement to them. So for me, that's, that's what I'm looking for is, okay, now when do I stop and start doing the center? And this is when it is. So out comes the Blanco Blanco, which is the white pinata jacquard ink, jacquard pinata. Out comes the dotting tool. I'm using one that's got a medium sized dot on one end and a very large one on the other. And I'll just use the medium sized one. And what do I mean by medium? Well, out of all the dotting tools I have, it's about the middle uh, size. So you'll just get to know what you like. I have a piece of packing material, really simple. I use as a palette and I've sped this way up. I shouldn't say way up, but I've doubled speed and sped it. So what I'm doing is just dropping this white ink by this little dotting tool wherever I want to create the center and create some highlights. So even where it's going to stay really dark, ultimately, and this is where you have to kind of critically look and decide where there's light and where's there's shadow, you'll see that these white drops are getting pulled in and immersed into the green and the black in the center. So what that's great, uh, what's great about that is that it's, it's, creating all these natural hues, tones of the greens and the black. And it's making some natural shadows and really interesting texture. So don't fret if the white sort of falls in and gets pulled down and made into a very light, light, light green or a gray. Because as you keep making these layers, and I'll come in with my airbrush and just dry that off a bit more. And that will set. The, all of those different greens and grays that I've got going on there. And another drop or two at the very most of that Blanco Blanco, that white ink, alcohol ink. And I'm just, I was just showing where there's shadow and light. And so I'm now adding a bit more white to where I think light would be on that center. 
I'll still add a bit of white to where the shadow would be, just won't be as much white. And you'll see also that the white is now starting to stay white. Uh, that's because I dried the ink underneath it really carefully. And yeah, it's some of it's still, yeah, I'm going to dry it again. Some of it's still sort of getting um, pulled in by the other colors. It doesn't matter. Um, one trick as well as I know some people use it, um, and I did after this particular one was done and cropped and ready to go, is that you can take a white gel pen. In fact, any color of gel pen works incredibly well here, but the white, um, which is what I wanted to enhance the brightness on the centerpiece and the, the reflection of light, um, just adds again to what the alcohol ink has done. So this is a bit of a time-consuming process. As I said, I spent this up by double, so uh, it's a labor of love, most definitely. Uh, there's a million ways to do it. You can actually put deco foil on where the, the uh, ink is still tacky and kind of heavy in the middle. That creates some beautiful effects as well. Uh, and in this case, I wanted to show you the dawning tool because it's one that, uh, that tool is of interest, I think, to a lot of people, given the questions that I have received in some of the groups I belong to and, and uh, on social media as well. So I'm a bit stingy as well. I try not to waste anything, so I'm using up every little drop of that Blanco Blanco um, before it dries. And so I've got us back down to regular speed here, so I must be nearly finished the center of the flower. And another, again, great thing about it's it's like any piece of art, but I spin these around and I look at them from every ankle and decide what the top is going to be. It's not necessarily the way I was working on it. Uh, and I think in my case, I've actually flipped it around uh, for, yes, I have for purposes of, of showing you on this video. It's like that, as opposed to like that. But there's the final product. And that's a wrap for today. So I'm going to leave you with a still, just so that you can take a better look at this beautiful green queen. Thanks for joining me.